I love to snack, and for a lot of people like me, unhealthy snacks are all around us, and sometimes it's difficult to choose the healthy snacks. So I thought I'd share this video just with some inspirations and ideas on how to incorporate more healthy snacks in your daily diet. Of course, you can have unhealthy snacks than one, but this is just more about what you eat on a daily basis, and these things really help me. And yeah, it's actually so much fun to try out these new flavors and think out of the box. There's endless opportunities out there. And these are just a few ideas. There's so much more coming up in the future. Powered by Leaves. Hey there, fresh tubers. My name is Dupri. And if you're new here, this channel is all about vegan nutrition, food and food experiments. We're gonna have lots of fun together, so make sure to subscribe. And yeah, let's get started. The best type of healthy snack is fresh fruit. Nutritionally dense, full of antioxidants, phytochemicals, and fiber. So you wanna try different types to see which ones you like. There are endless opportunities here. This is just a great default snack. If you want help with eating more fruit in general, try placing it where it's visible for everyone so they can grab one when they're passing by and since it's no effort to repair, it's an easier choice to make than most other healthy snacks. Another way to make it more appealing is by peeling it, pre-slicing it, and storing it in the fridge in a container. You can make fruit salads with a variety of fresh and vibrant fruit. You can take it with you anywhere you go or snack on it a little bit when you visit the kitchen. An important factor is to make it look appealing. Use fresh and ripe fruit. Especially if you're feeding your family who's not used to eating a lot of fruit, find fun shapes and figures, make it look beautiful. Here I've made a papaya boat with lots of fillings to improve the aesthetics of it. If you're sick of eating fruit by itself, you can add some dates or nuts to have with it. Here I'm adding some cashew butter on top of sliced green apples just to add some extra creaminess and flavor. Not to mention the healthy fats. To switch it up sometimes, you can also process them a little. You can make nice cream or sorbet by blending the ripe bananas and berries to have thick creamy desserts. Or you can bake your fruit to have it caramelized and warm. Here I'm using a bottle cap to create a ring shape to sliced apples, which I then place on a baking tray. Pears are also really nice baked, which you can have with some nice cream. I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of cinnamon to enhance the warmth and that goes in the oven for 180 degrees celsius for 20 minutes. You're gonna get this caramelized, crispy, and chewy rings which you can pack with you or store in a jar. When we make healthy snacks, what we're looking for is something that's filling but also nutrition dense, that has a lot of phytonutrients, antioxidants, and fiber. This will make our gut healthy and our skin glow. So I'm gonna share a couple of sweet and savory recipe ideas for you guys. So first, we are gonna make one of my favorites, sweet, chewy, decadent cookies that are made from whole ingredients. For this recipe, you need one and a half cups of whole grain oats, two ripe bananas, half a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of acave nectar or sweetener, and a quarter cup of nut or seed butter. I'm using tahini for this recipe. We're gonna peel and place our bananas in a bowl. My bananas weren't so ripe, but the riper the better. You won't need the sweetener then. Just smash it with your fork roughly. This should be easier again if your bananas are super ripe. Pour in the nut or seed butter, sweetener and salt and mix together well. And then you can add the oats. So this is your basic mixture. You can add any additional flavors you like into this, like chocolate chips or raisins. These are the flavors I like to have. I'm dividing the batter into three, and then I'm adding some blueberries into one, quarter cup of desiccated coconut to the other. The cookies will hold its shape, so you wanna place them on the tray how you like it to come out. This goes in a preheated oven for 180 degrees Celsius for 13 minutes. Or when the cookies have browned on top, you're gonna get this crunchy and chewy cookies that are really snackable and tasty. I like to store them and sometimes just have it with my lunch or just in between meals. And sometimes I like to have them when we're watching a movie with some oat milk. These cookies are made from whole ingredients with fiber, good fats and protein. 
Unlike traditional cookies, you won't get a sugar dip after you eat them. In fact, you'll eat less throughout the day because of the dense ingredients. Not only that, they're incredibly chewy and warm and so tasty to eat as well. Next, we are gonna make a pink spread that not only looks good, but is packed with flavor and made completely with good for you ingredients. For this recipe, we need a tablespoon of cashew butter or blended cashews, half a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of plant-based yogurt, one cooked beetroot and a teaspoon of lemon juice. I like to buy beetroot pre-cooked. It just makes the whole process so much easier, but you can also roast it or boil it yourself as well if needed. So we're just going to add all the ingredients into a blender and blitz that together for two to three minutes until you get the smooth and creamy pink dip. I'm then spreading this dip into healthy whole grain rye bread slices, along with some sliced avocado on top. This is a spread that you can store in the fridge and you can have with cut veggies or crackers and you know it's full of good fats and fiber plus antioxidants. You can have this dip with anything, some whole grain crackers, flaxseed crackers, brown rice cakes or cut veggies. I personally like to have it with these oat and seed crackers. It's so earthy and creamy. I like to spread it on some rice cakes and then add some sliced avocado as well. This combination of pink and green is not only so beautiful to look at, the avocado and beetroot complement each other as well. Not to mention there's a slight tanginess from the lemon and the plant yogurt. You don't need to use plant yogurt here, I just thought it was a really nice addition, but you can totally avoid it if you don't have this at home, just add a few extra cashews instead. Next, we are going to be making mint coconut energy balls. For this recipe, we need a quarter cup of almond meal, quarter cup of desiccated coconut, a tablespoon of agave nectar or maple syrup, and some fresh mint leaves. I'm using a fair amount of leaves, but this really depends on how minty you like it to be. So we're going to blend that together for three to four minutes until it's clumpy like this. You want to form small balls with your hands. I could make nine balls from this measurement. You can have it just like that, but I like to jazz it up a little bit by rolling them in cocoa powder or coconut flakes just to give it that extra flavor and it looks like a truffle, which is really cool. The good thing about these energy balls is that you can store it and have it as a snack throughout the next week. The mint, coconut and cocoa combination is phenomenal. It is so tasty and I like how small it is so you can just have a couple before lunch or as an afternoon snack and it's so refreshing and filling. So this is a recipe if you're looking for something more filling. So we all know and love the classic avocado toast. And this is if avocado toast had a baby with grilled cheese and it's vegan and it's healthy. And yeah, it's my favorite recipe. So if you don't try any of the other recipes, definitely try this one out. For this recipe, we are using half an avocado, whole grain toast, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a pinch of salt, two teaspoons of lemon juice, and about 50 grams of extra firm tofu. Scoop the avocado flesh into a bowl and add the lemon juice. Crumple the tofu into small pieces with your fingers and add yeast, salt, and garlic powder. Mash that all together. You want it all blended and slightly grainy like this. You can spread that into your toast and have it like that, or I like to put them together and place it on a grill pan for some minutes on each side and get this grilled, cheesy tasting avo sandwich. This you can have as a lunch or as a snack, just depending on how hungry you are. If you're looking for something lighter, you can use the same dip for crackers or have it with rice cakes. Lastly, we're gonna make a walnut and parsley pesto. If you're not in the habit of eating nuts or herbs regularly, this is an easy way to incorporate these healthy fats in your diet. We need half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of agave nectar or sweetener, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, half a bunch of parsley, and a quarter cup of raw walnuts. Into a blender, add the walnuts, vinegar, salt, and sweetener, along with half a bunch of the parsley leaves. 
I know this seems like a lot, but when we blend this, it will shrink down immensely. Then we're just gonna blitz this up. You might need to stir it one or two times in between, just so everything is blended nicely. When you get a creamy and slightly chunky paste like this, we are done. I like to use this primarily as a dip for veggies and crackers. You can also use it as a sandwich spread. One way I like to have it is with rice cakes with fresh arugula on top. The arugula goes really well with our walnut dip. This dip is creamy and tangy and has a really different flavor that's new and this is what I mentioned before, you get all these like new flavors. So I think some people will really like it and maybe there's some people who wouldn't like it. You won't know unless you try. It's definitely different. That's it for today guys. I hope you found something helpful in this video. My favorite recipe was definitely the avocado sandwich. It was so good. And mention down below what was your favorite. And yeah, I hope you're all doing really well and I'll see you again in the next video.